All the way around. Yeah, yeah. You want it. You want to handle the sun. Come out here so we can get you closer to the top. Keep your distance. Oh, I think we're going to have to do it. We're doing PT today, guys. I know. We're going to have to go. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Everybody six feet apart from each other. <laughs> it's the, uh, I feel the, the, uh, the, uh, I got my vegetable beer in there. Woo woo! Nice. It is, but I mean, it's like quarantine beer, I guess. Yeah. Mic check, one, two, three, testing, testing, everybody good? Oh, yeah, thank you. There you go. That was, yeah, I like that salute. Testing. <laughs> testing, one, two, three, mic check, mic check. Mic check, mic check. Everybody good? Thank you. Hi. Veterans, ten, hut. A pledge to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. My name is Richard Andrade, state representative, and most importantly, I am an Air Force veteran who is actually stationed in our very own state. I'd like to start off by saying that I was one of the sponsors of the Buffalo Soldiers Arizona Territory Monument. Why is this so symbolic? Because even they faced discrimination. They were not well equipped and they faced extreme hardships. But despite this, they protected the white settlers that were coming into the new Arizona Territory. Why am I here? I am here because I'm standing and planning on introducing legislation to remove the Confederate Memorial from this very plaza, from the Wesley Bolin Plaza. The Confederacy was defeated during the American Civil War. Why does the state have a memorial which symbolizes oppression, discrimination, racism, slavery, and hate? We as a nation do not honor our enemies. How many memorials honor the Third Reich in Nazi Germany? Emperor Hirohito, former emperor of Japan, and the terrorist Osama bin Laden? The answer is zero. I'm standing here with our black brothers and sisters in arms who have served our country with honor and dignity. Many have paid the ultimate sacrifice, and yes, they have bled the same color of blood, red. One of military units which have protected our freedom because there have been many. The 92nd Infantry Division saw combat during World War II, which helped turn the tide in Italy. The Tuskegee Airmen, 
were the first black military aviators. I cannot close without recognizing NASCAR, who banned the Confederate flag. They have rallied around Bubba Wallace, and especially even more once another symbol of hate and racism was found, a noose. Arizona needs to stop up, step up against all forms of hatred and racism by removing all symbols which represent a defeated and conquered Confederacy. The only flag we should honor is the United States flag. I want to close. The day we have to force by bayonet to stand during our national anthem and presentation of the flag, we have failed as a country to hold true our lives, our liberties, and our pursuit of happiness for all citizens. I stand here today representing my Democratic veteran colleagues as co-chair of the Legislative Veteran Caucus. Representative Freeze, Senators Bradley and Peshkai send their support for our efforts today. Who you do not see here are our Republican colleagues. You don't not see Representative Blackman or Representative Lawrence. And I ask you to ask them why. I want to close with this because it really does matter. Black lives matter. And next, I want to introduce Corey Harris, Army veteran. When I first decided to come out and speak today, my first thought was, I'm the last person that should be up here speaking. I'm not black. We need black lives to speak for for this issue. But I spoke with a friend of mine who told me the Civil War wasn't won by only black slaves, by free black men. There weren't enough free black men to fight for themselves in the Civil War. They needed allies. And if anything, that's what this moment is about right now, is everybody coming together to say that we stand for something, that our country stands for something. And it's what we were taught in the military over and over and over. We fight for liberty and freedom. Yes, there are other causes we fight for, but number one, we fight for freedom. Case in point, those guns over there represent the beginning and end of World War II. The USS Arizona that was sunk, the USS Missouri gun to signify the end of the war in a fight against those who would take away the lives of minorities, of Jews, of Catholics, of multiple different minorities. The Navajo Code Talkers fought for that same fight. The Operation Enduring Freedom uh, uh, Monument stands for the fight that I was a part of, fighting to give freedom in another country. There is one single monument in this entire area that stands against freedom, and that's this one right here because it's for those that fought against the value of freedom, the American value of freedom, that said, we're going to ignore that and fight to keep people enslaved. That was the fight of the Confederate soldiers, fighting against the core belief of who we are as a nation, that if someone is taking away your liberty, we support you. If someone tells you you're not equal, we support you. And that's why I'm here today. That's what I fought for in the military. That's why we're here. It's, it's wonderful that we have the opportunity to speak on this in the wake of George Floyd's murder. Um, there are lots of, there's a lot more that we have to do. This by no means is the only fight or even the biggest fight, but it is a symbol. And if there's anything that we in the military understand, it's symbols. This entire plaza is dedicated to those symbols. And this is a symbol that Governor Ducey can say to all Arizonans, I hear the concerns of black lives. I hear everybody that's fighting against them, but there's one thing that we'll stand for, and that's, and that's freedom. We need to take down this monument. This monument was built specifically to fight against the civil rights movement of the 60s, to pretend that slavery didn't happen, to say, oh, look, but the veterans, it's not about slavery, it's not about, um, keeping those, uh, taking people's rights away and making them work for us. The same thing that we heard when I fought, 
there were people that said, um, you know, you have to be on board with the war because of veterans. If anything, <laughs> as veterans, we honor the right to speak out against injustice. And I hope Governor Ducey listens. I hope Governor Ducey can see this veteran through the eyes of black people, of brown people, of white people, of veterans that should all say, this is not our heritage. This is against our heritage of freedom. Our heritage, our heritage is to take down those affronts to freedom. Our heritage is to take down monuments to slavery. This is wrong. Governor Ducey, open your eyes and listen. And with that, uh, I'm going to close and uh, we have uh, one more speaker. Um, Good morning. I have to make sure that my daughter sees me masked and taking off my mask and social distancing. My name is Signa Oliver. I am a volunteer for the group Vets Ford, who right now have over 80 signatures on our letter to Governor Ducey asking for this monument of dishonor to be removed. So, as I speak, I want you to think about some things. Um, one is, to the, victory, to the victor goes the spoils. And I'm going to ask some questions. Why were statues like these and others that are erected around Arizona erected? And when were these statues erected? And what is their significance in history? Co the Confederacy was, a domest was domestic enemies of the United States. They were dishonorable. They dis and having statues like this dishonors the sacrifice of those of us who signed a blank check to stay united and have all people of the United States of America to be free. Honor versus dishonor. Many of these statues were erected by groups like the Daughters of the Confederacy. And why were they erected? They were erect re erected to rehabilitate the enemies of the United States. They were re erected to glamorize this mythology of the people that stood against the freedoms of people with the skin hue of mine. They were not erected for a historical purpose, but a mythological purpose. Well, we're still having this argument in 2020, so I would say their mission was accomplished. I am, I, I get to have the privilege and an honor of serving this country, but I also serve this community. I was a Phoenix police officer in this, in this city. And I served with dignity when I served there. And when I met people, I treated them all with the dignity and respect of Americans that they were. So we need to remove these symbols of the Confederacy what we're asking Governor Ducey to do is listen to us because many times, you know, certain people use veterans as props. Well, those of us that were veterans that signed that blank check, we won't be used as props. We won't let our voices be quieted. We have to stand up for the liberty and freedom of all Americans. So we want Governor Ducey to immediately remove this and the eight other Confederate statues, specifically the one in Sierra Vista that is in the Veterans Cemetery that talks about these Confederate soldiers that fought for independence. They weren't fighting for independence of people that look like me. They were actually fighting to enslave people that look like me. And I challenge everyone. I, I found this movie on Netflix, this a parody, uh, that's a parody movie. It's called The Confederate States of America. I challenge all of you to go watch it. And what the premise of the movie is, what would have happened had the Confederate won? What would have happened is I would still be a slave. People that look like me would still be enslaved in this great country. I challenge you to go watch it. Abraham Lincoln, instead of being the hero, he was the villain that was running to Canada. I challenge you to watch that movie. So, one of the other things that we're asking Governor Ducey to do is um, convene a special session of the legislature 
so that we can talk about and put together meaningful law enforcement reform. Law enforcement officers are our great servants of the city, but when the bad ones do bad things, they dishonor the, the, every, everyone that puts on the badge in the uniform. Good cops don't condone what bad cops do. They do not. So, and, and speaking, I think Corey spoke and, and brought up um, our Republican representatives that are absent, that are veterans. Um, and I, you know, I question why they are not here standing with us. Because when we stood together um, in, that, in that green uniform or that camo uniform or whatever uniform you stood in, we were one. So they should be standing here. And maybe the reason they're not sta standing here are they're, they're pandering to the acceptance of the people that dishonor this nation. Thank you. At this time, we would like to, uh, if there's any questions from any of the speakers, now's the time to do that. Well, the governor has stated that, that he hasn't stated anything, let's be honest. So that means we, the people, have to take action. And how are we going to be able to do that is through legislation, uh, through legislation in the next 2020, or actually 2021, legislative session. So that's why I'm planning on working with stakeholders and trying to address this issue. Uh, if we have to do it legislatively, then we're going to do that. And I'm very positive we all have many veterans that will be testifying and say, yes, we need to remove these symbols of, of racism and hate and slavery. So that is the public process as well. If he's not going to listen to the public, then that means we have a governor that's not willing to listen to the people. And you heard my fellow veterans. You heard them say that when veterans, all these symbols in this, all the memorials in this plaza represent veterans. If he's not going to use us and he's going to only use us as props, we'll remember. Okay, but still, can the governor, by his own power, say, I ordered this from you, can he do that? Yes, he can. And we've seen it over and over where the governor has made decisions, but he's unwilling to make a decision about this. And you hear the outcry on people saying, remove the memorial, remove this one. And he has not responded, and that's why we're turning up the pressure on him to do it. Like I said, if he's unwilling to, we the people will. We the veterans will. So you have 80 signatures on a letter that you will be delivering to the governor. Are you still collecting those signatures and when do you plan on dropping the letter off? Uh, at least so, somebody else can answer to that. Absolutely. So I'll turn it over to okay. Corey. Just give us your name and title and spell your name. Please. Sure, uh, this is Aaron Marquez, M-A-R-Q-U-E-Z. Uh, AARON uh, with Vets Forward, and uh, we help circulate a letter uh, for all veterans uh, in Arizona to sign. And at this point this morning, we just launched the letter yesterday. Uh, over vet 80 veterans across the state of Arizona have already signed the letter, and we're calling on all veterans that support this cause and uh, this effort to sign on as well. And uh, they can find more by following Vets Forward on Facebook and Twitter and VetsForward.us. Do you have a projected date when you want to get it to Ducey, or is that still kind of in the works? I think we'll run the uh, the letter signing campaign through the end of the week and, and shoot to deliver it to the governor on Monday. Thank you. Any other questions for any of the other speakers? Okay, all right, thanks so much for coming out today.
that we were able to release COVID signs. Hey, address, everybody, listen up real quick. The, the address is 1624 East Broadway Road. Uh, I know Aaron and uh, Vince Moore are going to uh, actually discuss uh, some information in further, and we're welcome to come over there and. Uh, Again, though we practice social distance, you watch you to come over and uh, have those uh, interviews and uh, discuss. The kitchen is really good. Hey, any, uh, any people that can speak better Spanish? First time I've done that. Yeah. Anybody here? All right. Me and probably representative. And I guess you have to hear the thing. Well, I'm going to see you. Yes. Hey, representative, you're ready. As soon as I get over there, it should be okay. Not right now. You're great. Thank you so much. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. I was waiting for it. <laughs> okay, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, you're welcome in the time, so. Yeah, well. Do you want me to go to one of these things? Hey, I'll be there. Can we just do a clip with you? Or say something in Spanish? We say soy better ano de la casa de aire, or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.